So now we've tried the new cross-platform template for Avalonia, it's time to merge our changes from the current loudness meter. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm just going to rename this folder to Avalonia loudness meter 2. We'll try Riders IDE now to see if its new solution thing works the same, or whether it's using an old template or not. So this is Avalonia cross-platform. Uh, set the folder to the same folder and we'll call it the same name. Avalonia loudness meter. And we create that. Unable to create solution already exists. That's a slight bug, but I think if we just open that with Rider, this should work, I presume. So yeah, it's made everything. It just failed to put the solution in the same folder, even though it was there. It must have tried to do it twice or something. And then because we need to port this one over, I'm just going to open this folder in Visual Studio Code, just so I can see it easier. So here's the current project, and here is the new project. Uh, let's see if we can build the project first. So that all built successfully. Uh, let's see if we can run the code. Yep, and that runs. It's full of errors everywhere. Everything, I think the red is just not checked into Git, like Git changes. But this is also complaining. Um, squiggly underline. I bet that'll want main async, which we don't want to do. So we just have that coding rule complaining at us there. Let's just restart Rider though to see if it gets rid of that squiggly line at the top. Yes, yeah, so that's got rid of that. So now it's not complaining there. Oh no, now it's complaining again. So we'll figure out getting rid of this warning afterwards. It's not stopping anything working, it is working. I just don't like Rider's default turn everything red syntax when it's not in Git. It just makes everything look like there's a problem. It's not the best color. So it's going to be one of these merge with conflicts, changeless conflict, or unknown. Let's try turning them off. And there we go, get rid of the red. So at least that isn't as garish now. So what we want to figure out is we'll take a look around this project first and look for anything that's specific to each platform, if you will, if there's anything specific. So it looks like this has a boot screen, like a splash logo, and then it uses Blazor, which is awesome. And I'm guessing everything else behind the scenes loads the actual app. So there's nothing as expected there, which you wouldn't expect to find. Uh, nothing specific in the web. You wouldn't expect to find anything specific in any of these apps because it should all be in the main platform. That's the whole point of this, uh, at least at this stage in a blank application. So that's the same. That's the same. Yeah, so short of just names, these are all just boilerplate wrappers. So we don't have to concern ourselves now with any of those really for the port. And we can focus on this application. So let's just take a look at the differences now. And let's first also find out with ours. Uh, what it is we did different. So we know for a start the assets, that's an easy one. So we can just go to the assets folder and just be honest, just oh, move it into the right place. Put the assets folder in the loudness meter and then they appear here. So now the assets are in there. We don't need the hidden idea folder, don't need the hidden object folder, the git ignore. Uh, I didn't think was specific to that folder, did we put it inside that folder? Yeah, we must put it inside. So I'm going to move that git ignore over as well into here, just so it matches. In fact, it's made a git ignore when we've made the project. So it might have made it with the right settings anyway, especially if there's like new file types in this cross platform. So we'll ignore git ignore, uh, go to the app. And in the app, we have our style. So we should be able to just copy these styles over. So let's just take a look at app.xaml and you can see the difference it has a data template of a view locator because we're not currently using view model stuff yet so we'll just leave the view model locator in uh, and then we've got styles this is modern dark we've gone mode light so we can just override that basically get rid of that and paste our original styles in it's now missing the large label control which for the moment is just loose in the top level uh, so now i guess we could put that in a new folder and we can call it styles, I guess. Would it be asset styles or styles? I think it'd just be styles at the top. 
So we'll just do styles and we'll paste them in. And then we'll do styles and it can find it that way. Now, the only thing we have to remember is assets, I believe, needed to be set to um, Avalonia resource, which they are by default by the looks of it. It's sort of figured that one out. So I presume all these will just work. Uh, the app is now the same. The code behind of the app, let's double check that. I don't think we changed that in ours. And uh, nope. Desktop main windows, main window class style. So this is changed, but we haven't customized it, so we should be good there. And oh, so it's not using the view model locator at this point. It's actually just when we create the app, it's binding the view models like this. Project we don't concern ourselves with, the large label we've done. If we look at the program next, uh, it doesn't have a program because it's actually now program per platform. So you've got main activity, program for desktop, main for iOS, and program for web. So this would have been, if it was customized, this would be different per platform now. So that's gone. So the only thing left is literally the main window. The main window's code behind is also the same. So all we should have to do is move this window over. And I'm hoping um, it should be as simple as copy and pasting the whole thing into the main view. So the main window is just a blank window and it's not finding the Avalonia icon because we removed it. Oh, that's the icon at the top. Yeah, so we've, we've lost the icon at the top, which we should probably make an icon soon. So I'm going to leave that presuming it doesn't crash and we'll make an icon at some point. And then what it's done instead of putting it in here, it's just made a reference to main view. And that is a user control then, and it's put that inside of the window. So I guess it's easy just to swap out the contents of an entire window then. So we'll follow that practice. We'll, we'll keep the window having a main view. And we'll change ours from a window now to a user control. So what we do need to do, though, is set the width and height the same of the window, because that's the important part. So let's just hide the context. We'll set this to the width and height that we want. And now we can ignore that bit. Styles, I reckon, want to go in the page at the minute, these ones, button small and hover. So I'm going to move them into the main view. And the view can now have um, the styles. And then what else do we have? Uh, I think the rest is just the actual the entire control. So let's just try and paste that in to here. And you can see it's got a view model already with greeting. Uh, and that view model is bound by this design data context, which binds the main view model to it. So we'll leave that in there until we get to view models but we're not currently using it. We'll just paste the grid in. And now we can see we don't have SVG image. And that was because we had in our project, we were using Avalonia SVG skier. So we need to install that as well, which is going to go in here, I believe. Manage Nougat packages. Avalonia.svg. Dot skier. There we go. Uh, do, do, do. Install. And that should give us the SVG image. There we go. And then I believe I saw red here. So controls, large label control isn't working. And that's because up here, namespace, we didn't add. So in here, we had the namespace for controls. And that is because in the XAML, if you go to the top, uh, we had the namespace for controls here. So we'll put that now in the main view. And scroll down. And I think those reds should be gone. Yep. So that is potentially all we need to do. So let's try and build now and see where we're at. So that was relatively painless because... Luckily, the app is currently just a single page app and not much has been done to it. So it's a good stage to port it over to the new cross-platform.
this would probably have been quite a bit more difficult uh, if it were got a bit further in. So that's built, but the ID has got errors with what? Avalonia previewer? Oh no. Is the previewer now broke? Oh, hang on. I think the previewer breaks when you install the SVG tool. You have to restart if we remember that rightly. Let's just restart the SVG. And hopefully, the previewer isn't broken now. And does the preview work? So the previewer now doesn't appear to do anything. Previewer is broken. See if the application runs. And we've got an error when we try to run. Unable to parse styles large label control XAML. Let's try forward slash. Maybe this uh, URI way of finding it's different now. Yep, so now it wants a forward slash, which I don't think we had before. Uh, doo -doo -doo, main window. Oh, we did have before. I'm just missing off the forward slash. So now let's move it back into styles. And go back to here. And do forward slash styles. See if that still runs. Yep, that's now running. So I think we just missed the forward slash off. I thought we literally copy and pasted it. So didn't expect that. And let's try that. And if this works, we should get something looking exactly like we did before. And we don't. So we're now missing all the files and styles by the looks of it. Um, so even though we are apparently loading the styles, it's not loading them. So does the preview work now? The preview works, and the well, actually the styles must be working. But now we've got what looks like actually the template is it's either different or there's more default values now. We should have black text, for example, there. So is it just the case that the Avalonia title text was never set to black and it's now defaulting to white? Basically, just a change of default. Uh, colors. Yeah, so we haven't set, haven't actually set the foreground color anywhere. So you can see here it's just a label and the font weight is heavy basically, but there's no color. So the label, you want a default label. So let's add some uh, app defaults. App default styles. And let's just copy and paste this app default styles add them to the project here they are we don't need any code behind styles i literally don't think we need that code behind at all controls we don't need design preview with and then we don't need them i just put a label for now Just a single label control. So we just want to do a style selector on label, say. And by default, we want the foreground to be white, the background to be ignored. We just want basically a foreground to be black. And we could set that to a resource, but that's literally the color we want them at the minute, so that's fine. Template we don't need. Other controls we don't need. So we just have a basic label here. And let's see if one, the preview works. Yep, so we can see a label. And we might as well set the background to white by default. So there's what a label should look like. And so long as this loads the styles in, uh, this should now have black text on the header. And if it doesn't, we'll look at why. And now it's built, you can see it's changed to black. And you can also see it's then defaulted all of these to white. So you can see the difference in having to change default styles. All this was exactly the same, and now uh, quite a bit's different. So this looks the same, and the hop is the same. This area here uh, wants to, I don't know how we do this, but we want to kind of invert the 
actually that's a style so we can just invert the style of the large label control i think it was so the foreground there is white and we'll have to bind the labels foreground to yeah so we've got to bind the labels foreground that isn't passing through even though i would have said it should have that's not passing through so you can see the differences already with just uh migrating a basic app is already showing quite a few different uh, things we need to patch up there we go that's the same now and then we've got to do the same for the control below which is here and there we have that now those are the same i believe yep those are the same now the buttons are the same the top menu is the same and now it's just have we still got the grow yeah they still work it's just the buttons now so these buttons that are and to be honest those buttons aren't actually correct anyway these buttons are going to be changed next to this style so i'm not going to worry about changing them so i think that's the migration done uh, you can see we want an icon when you tab there's no icon here so you can see we want to set that icon up which will make one and we probably want to do this next we probably want to do these buttons and this drop down and get these done next but that's the migration done so we'll just close this and commit it now and to do that all we need to do is now delete avalonia loudness meter 2 folder because we have now changed and go to git and we can take a look at all the changes, mostly just moving folders. So it's a bit of a mess. It's not a very clear, obvious move, but we know what we've done. So this is just migrate to xplat uh, templates. And if you want to follow along with this code, uh, just go to github.com forward slash angel6 forward slash YouTube. And then you can find the Avalonia stuff is in here, Avalonia loudness meter. And that's the code that we're looking at now. So that's it for the migration. Next, we can move back onto some UI and then we'll jump into view models. But hopefully you can follow along with this, migrate your project. And if you get any issues, let me know and we'll work them out on the Discord. That's it for this one and I'll catch you in the next.